At the eastern entrance to Bacchus Marsh is the Avenue of Honour. The Avenue of Honour was planted in 1918 before the end of the First World War and it is the feature of Bacchus Marsh that locals know best. However, Bacchus Marsh has a world recognised connection to Earth's ancient geology and today there are clues to this fame and connection in Bacchus Marsh. It's in front of us every day in its landscape, in its buildings and in its artefacts. For example, the courthouse in Main Street is made of stone that is evidence of extreme times and events. This is evidence for a great ice age and Bacchus Marsh is at the centre of the study of the ice age called the Permian period. And this is the story of the great ice age in Bacchus Marsh. So what do we mean by an ice age? An ice age is a long period of low temperatures of the Earth's surface and atmosphere. The Earth's climate over time has alternated between glacial and interglacial warmer periods. An ice age, therefore, implies the presence of extensive ice sheets in both northern and southern hemispheres. At the moment, we're in an interglacial or warmer period, but during the Permian, southern Australia was in the glacial period and covered by a large continental ice sheet. There are two major types of glaciers, continental ice sheets and alpine or valley glaciers. Continental ice sheets are large, for example, Antarctica, but they're also smaller ice caps and fields. Alpine or valley glaciers originate from mountain ice caps flowing down valleys looking much like long giant tongues and there are several examples of these on the South Island of New Zealand. Ice erodes the land surface and often carries the broken rocks and soil debris far from their original places, resulting in some interesting glacial landforms. In the Bacchus Marsh area, we see relics of the Permian Ice Age formed by a large continental ice sheet. Glacial sediments have a range of specific terms that are related to how the rocks were formed. These features include glacial grooves and pavements, where coarse gravel and boulders were carried along underneath the ice of the glacier and provided the abrasive power to cut through trough-like glacial grooves and scratches into the underlying bedrock. The direction of the glacier's movement can be worked out from the shape of the grooves. Finer sediments, also in the base of the moving glacier, further scour and polish the bedrock surface, forming a glacial pavement. Glacial erratics are stones and rocks that were transported by a glacier and then left behind after the glacier melted. Erratics can be carried for hundreds of kilometres and range in size from pebbles to very large boulders. Moraine is a term used to describe an accumulation of rocks and glacial debris carried and deposited by a glacier. Till is a mixture of clay, sand and pebbles and boulders derived from the erosion of material moving by the glacier. It is deposited some distance down ice to form terminal, lateral, medial and ground moraines. Tillite is a poorly sorted sedimentary rock comprising large, angular, unweathered blocks and glacial till in a rock flower. Rock flower is a finely powdered rock formed by mechanical grinding of bedrock by glacial action. Drop stones is a term that describes fragments of rock from large to small found within finer grained water deposited sedimentary rocks and these can be transported on ice rafts which when melted drop the fragments into the finer grained material. In particular the glacial sediments found in the quarries around Bacchus Marsh show many of these features. What we do not see at Bacchus Marsh are the erosional features of valley glaciers as shown in this diagram. This is because southern Australia in the Permian is not thought to have been a mountainous area. In the geological record, time is divided into eras by significant global events. The Paleozoic era begins in the Cambrian period at 540 million years ago with a rapid diversification of life, starting in the oceans and then colonising the land. The Permian is the last period of the Paleozoic era and spans some 47 million years from around 300 to 250 million years ago. During the early Permian, the Australian continent was attached to Antarctica 
and through tectonic movements of the land masses was merged into the supercontinent of Pangaea. With one land mass extending across the globe from pole to pole and a single ocean, conditions were highly localised and strongly seasonal. Australia was positioned close to the South Pole. Widespread glacial sediments across the region provide indicators of the climate. Conditions were cold with ice covering much of the land. Australia remained near the South Pole for much of this period with a movement towards warmer and dry conditions towards the end of the Permian. Later during the Mesozoic era, Pangaea progressively separated. Some 200 million years after the end of the Permian, Gondwana ultimately breaks apart, forming Antarctica and the Australian continent, which begins to drift north towards the equator. Like all geological eras, the Paleozoic ends with a major global event. The end of the Permian is known as the Great Dying. This is the greatest natural disaster in the Earth's history. At this time, around 250 million years ago, more than 90% of all species died out. Marine species suffered the greatest loss, with around 96% becoming extinct. On land, around 70% of vertebrate species are lost, and plants are greatly affected. Plant-eating animals are some of the hardest hit. So what caused the Great Dying? Geological evidence from around the globe shows that during this time there was high concentrations of carbon dioxide and methane, leading to ocean acidification and unstable conditions on land. The cause of the extinction is difficult to positively identify, and there appears to be a sequence of catastrophic events in pulses or stages. The main trigger is believed to be sudden and massive phase of volcanic activity that spewed toxic gases and dust into the atmosphere. More gradual climatic shifts followed. Meteor impacts have also been proposed as a cause. This type of event led to the extinction of dinosaurs and other species at the end of the Mesozoic era. Those species that survived the permanent extinction generally took some time to recover from the unstable conditions, but provided the foundations for life to flourish in the subsequent Mesozoic era. The Mesozoic era ends with the mass extinction of dinosaurs and other species, but that's another story. At Bald Hill, northwest of Bacchus Marsh, there is a massive deposit of Permian sandstone of glacial origin. The deposit of rocks, crushed and ground up stones, sand and gravel is over 1,000 metres thick. Parts of the deposit are exposed in three old quarries on the west side of the hill. First exploited in the late 1850s, the Permian sedimentary rock was cut to supply sandstone blocks for buildings. A photograph by Richard Daintree shows the Metzen quarry in 1858 when stone was being extracted for the Treasury building. Sandstone from the Bald Hill quarries was used in the construction of the Custom House in Flinders Street, the Treasury Building in Spring Street, and the Parliamentary House Library. In Bacchus Marsh, the sandstone was used in the construction of James Young's house in Bennett Street, the Manor House, and the local courthouse and lockup. The sedimentary rock tillite has now eroded, however, it is still possible to see the composite mix of the sandstone. In some areas, the material is twisted, contorted and turned on an angle. This reflects the massive pressure that it has endured and the history of movement caused by nearby faults, mainly the Rosalie Fault that passes on a line north-south just over Bald Hill to the east. This cliff face is Permian Tillite and was formed about 270 million years ago. It's on the wall of the Quarry Car Park, Werribee Gorge State Park. And you'll see in it a series of layers that are probably resulting from different episodes of glaciers melting and dropping their material. And after that, been pressurized 
to form this sandstone. The sandstone has been used by the Country Roads Board who crushed it and carted it to form the base of the Melton Bypass on the Western Highway. Yes, we're in Burby Gorge State Park and this is a remnant of the Permian period. On the river track at Werribee Gorge State Park, you'll see as you walk along the track on your right hand side the remnants of Permian sediment. You'll notice that the rocks inserted into the sediment are randomly arranged where they were dropped by a continental glacier more or less 270 million years ago. This section of the river track has a convincing wall of Permian sandstone, all of which display the classic signs of Permian tillite. In Werribee Orge State Park, the Werribee River has beside it rocks that are the moraine from melted glacier water. And these rocks you'll see have inserts of other rocks that look a bit like pudding. This is the moraine from the glacier in the act of melting, dropping its load, which have now formed part of the bank of the Werribee River. Scratch marks on this rock are called striations. The striations were created about 280 million years ago. This rock was embedded in a giant continental glacier during the Permian Ice Age. Picked up in the ice, it was dragged along as the glacier moved. It was dragged across uneven and hard surfaces and other rocks. These objects made the marks on this rock. Notice that there are parallel striations. Also, there are striations made in different directions, suggesting that it has been picked up and carried by several, several glaciers. The rock is much older than the Permian, 280 million years. It may be of marine origin from 480 million years old, but it is evidence of its dramatic treatment by a giant glacier 280 million years ago that makes it most interesting. Striated rocks that the, from the Permian era are often found associated with the Permian deposits around Bacchus Marsh. This striated rock is from the bank of the Lerdeberg River near Mackenzie Flat Picnic Ground. An interesting message from the past of Bacchus Marsh. Endomopterous fossils were found in the sandstone quarries at Bald Hill, Bacchus Marsh. These three species were described by Professor Frederick McCoy in his 1875 Prodromus of the Paleontology of Victoria. The samples are in the Museum of Victoria. Fossils of these species of the extinct seed fern have been found in Permian sandstone sediment on other continents. Research on spores and pollen extracted from sandstone along the Lodeberg River near Bacchus Marsh have provided evidence of our prior connection to other continents. These same spore and pollen species have also been found in India, South America and Africa. This has supported the idea that these continents were once connected in a supercontinent. The magnified images extracted by geologist Roger Pearson are from glacial deposits found in the bank of the Lodeberg River. They are from extinct plants from the Devonian period, reworked and transported by continental glaciers during the Permian period. They are from pines, ferns and algae. 
While no evidence of the parent plants have survived, the spores and pollen survived because they have a wall structure of natural polymer material that is highly resistant to decomposition. A, D and F are all conifer pollen grains. B and C are fern spore grains. E is an algal spore grain. Similar spores and pollen have been found on other continents once connected to Australia. On the Lodigerg River, near Lodigerg Gorge, deep parallel scale tracks in the bedrock have been found. Massive continental glaciers made these marks as they slowly slid downhill. The massive weight of a glacier up to two kilometres thick exerted great power and forced edge track marks into the bedrock. Matson's Quarry on Bald Hill was the subject of a report in the Melbourne Argus newspaper on 9th of March 1859. In the same year, geologist and photographer Richard Daintree photographed the quarry. Now in the State Library of Victoria, the photograph is available to use as a second source to list a few details, details of the quarry operation. The quarry was on the west side of Bald Hill. Although only 13 men appear in the photograph, 50 to 60 men were reported to be employed in the quarry operation. James Rice was the superintendent. The two cranes in the photograph are Nielsen's patent five ton derrick cranes. Mr. Matson, owner of the quarry, constructed a tramway to carry away the stone. The tramway went from the quarry south towards the Bacchus Marsh Ballarat Road. Part of a tram trolley wheel is shown in the bottom right hand corner of the photograph. This explains why today the road is the road to the quarry is named Tramway Lane. At the time the Argus wrote, from this the stone for the Melbourne Treasury is being taken, and the courthouse and the lockup in Bacchus Marsh Township are erected with the same material. Dressed stone blocks can be seen in the foreground and on the upper bench above the quarry. Hard to believe that these stones are cut from sediment deposited by a continental glacier about 280 million years ago. Bacchus Marsh Courthouse was built in 1858. The Public Works Department used sandstone from Matson's Quarry on Board Hill. This sandstone was formed from material deposited by giant continental glaciers about 280 million years ago. The sandstone was repaired in 1903 and the early 1970s. The older, slightly darker sandstone blocks are the original Bald Hill stones. Today the building is a magistrate's court, but it has been used as a county court, Crown Land Sales Office, Register for Births and Deaths, Roads Board Office and Shire Office. When you walk down Main Street, look at the courthouse and remember its connection to the Great Ice Age. However, the Bacchus, Ice, Bacchus Marsh Ice Age sandstone connection goes further afield, a classic treasury building in Melbourne. The beautiful old treasury building is in Melbourne, above Spring Street. It was designed by 19-year-old architect John James Clark in 1857. Built between 1858 and 1862, the three-storey building was designed to store Victorian gold and to house the Victorian governor. It has a bluestone foundation and sandstone exterior. The sandstone is remarkable as its origins are in the Great Ice Age, the Permian period, 270 million years ago. This sandstone is made up of tillite, mixed stones, ground up rocks and flakes gathered up and dumped by giant continental glaciers. These have been compressed into sandstone by years of pressure. Accumulated deposits from melting continental glaciers are found near Bacchus Marsh, 55 kilometres west of Melbourne. The Permian sandstone blocks in the walls of the building were quarried on the west side of Bald Hill in Bacchus Marsh. At the time, this was Matson's Quarry. 
This warm stone is a remarkable reminder of our connection to a geological period and harsh climate 270 million years ago.